Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. We bless you. Join with me. Stand up. Focus your attention on Jesus, the Son of God. Let's lift him high. Let's exalt the name of Jesus today. Let's worship together. Amen? Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, we exalt you today, Lord. We lift your name up above all names. We just want you in our place right now. We want your peace of God on us. Hallelujah. Because we know that you are not dead. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. A love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Let love explode. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. I love so bold to see a revolution somehow. And now I'm lost in your freedom. Yeah, Lord. I ran this world out. Surely alive and he's, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead. He's surely alive and he's, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. He's roaring, he's roaring, he's roaring like a lion. Yeah, he's roaring, he's roaring, he's roaring like a lion. Yes, Lord. You are roaring. Oh. Let hope arise. Let hope arise and make the darkness hide. My faith is dead. I need a resurrection somehow. Yeah. And now I'm lost in your freedom Around this world I'll overcome Yes, cause my God's not dead, he's surely alive And he's Just living on the inside, roaring like a lion God's not dead, he's surely alive And he's Just living on the inside, roaring like a lion Come on now God's not dead, he's surely alive, and he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive, he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. He's roaring, he's roaring, he's roaring like a lion. Yeah, Lord, you're roaring, you're roaring, you're roaring like a lion. Lord. You're roaring like a lion, Lord. Let our voices be pleasing to you, Lord. And we want to hear your trumpet sound. We want to hear the voice of God. Yes, let it be in this world, Lord. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival And let heaven roar and fire fall you know. And come shake the ground with the sound of revival Let's declare one more time Let heaven roar and fire fall Come shake the sound with the sound of revival. My God's.
God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive. And he's living on the inside. Lord, oh my God, my God's not dead, he's surely alive. And he's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive. And he's living on the Roaring like a lion, yeah. Oh, he's roaring, he's roaring, he's roaring like a lion. He's roaring, he's roaring, he's roaring like a lion. Yeah, Lord. Yes. Are you letting the God within you roar tonight, today? Let him roar. Let him roar through the darkness. Let him roar through uh, the anxiety. Let him roar through the not understanding, the confusion. Let him roar, roar within you to expel the darkness. Let's allow his roar within us to express him within the situations that we're in. Let's roar peace over ourselves. Let's roar love over ourselves and those in the community. Let's roar. Amen? Amen. Hello. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Yes, Lord. And who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless and all in wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. Oh Lord, that I would be set free. Yeah. Whoa, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for.
Let's sing about it. Sing about what he's done for us. Let's sing about how his presence is here during these times. Let's take that presence that we know far and well that's here. Let's put it on ourselves. And let's show the world. Let's be a light in the world. When you go outside and open your door to take some fresh air, go say hi to your neighbor. It's this kind of communication and cheering us in peace that breaks these chains. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Worthy. Oh, you are worthy. Lord, worthy. You are worthy. As worthy is the land was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. For us, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, yellow. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave, yellow. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing. That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life yes, So that I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Declare that one more time. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. When we remember what the Lord has done for us, it strengthens our faith. And so we can, we can expect what he's going to do for us because we know what he's already done. So we can thank him and lift up our voice and praise and worship and say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. And I am expecting you to do the same thing, whatever it is. I know that you're going to do whatever your prayer request is. Do you need healing today? Do you need provision today? Whatever it is, you ask him and wait for his perfect timing because you know and you trust and you have hope that he is who he says he is, the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Every 
coração For every breath For every good and perfect gift You give For every Sunrise on us, Lord. The raindrops we feel, Lord. Yeah. You're this new life, Lord. Wait. 
is over everything he is over disease he is over viruses he is over all pro <laughs> he is over everything and he takes lordship over it for he is the eternal king so why don't you declare that with me today declare that Jesus you are over everything you are over vir viruses you are over diseases you are over my fear you are over whatever it is that you're having a situation with he is over it because he is our Lord he is Jesus Christ We thank you for who you are, and we exalt you. Amen. Knowing that I'm your dear 
desire Oh, sanctified by glory and fire And now I found the greatest love of all Oh, is mine since you laid down your life The greatest sacrifice Oh, the greatest love and we'll sing in majesty in majesty Your grace has found me just as I am oh, Empty-handed but alive in your hands Oh Lord, we'll sing in Forever, Lord, you've changed us. Forever, I am changed by your love. Oh, in the presence of your majesty, your majesty, your majesty. Let's declare, let's declare that God is with us, amen? Let's declare that he's one step ahead of us, but he's also right behind us. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, I'm beside us, amen. Yes, he's walking right beside us. Either way, we know that God is on the move, amen? Hallelujah, Lord. Any time our heart turns from darkness to light Or any time temptation comes from someone stands to fight Or any time somebody lives to serve and not be served I know, I know, I know, I know Yeah, Lord, here we go God is on the move, on the move 
Hallelujah, God is on the move in many mighty ways. Oh, God is on the move, oh, on the move. Hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today. Yes, Lord. You're on the move, Lord. Anytime in weakness, or any time in weakness, someone falls upon their knees. Or dares to speak the truth that sets man free. Yes, Lord. Or any time the choice is made to stand upon the word. I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, Lord. That God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move. In many mighty ways, oh God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today, yes Lord, yes Lord, you're on the move today, you're on the move today. Yes, Lord. I see a generation. Here we go. I see a generation standing on the truth. In each and every nation, God is on the move. Yeah. I see a generation standing on the truth. In each and every nation, God is on the move. Yeah, Lord. Anytime the gospel stirs a searching soul And someone sends, send me here I go I know, I know, I know, I know That God is on the move, on the move Hallelujah, God is on the move In many mighty ways God is on the move on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, or on the move today, yeah, cause God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, in the mighty ways, yeah, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, or on the move today, yeah. Yeah, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, on the mighty ways, cause God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today, one more time, come on, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move in many mighty ways. Oh, God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move, oh, on the move today. Yes, Lord. On the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move. It might seem that nothing's happening, but he's working behind the scenes. God is always on the move. And we declare that today. God, we ask you to help us to see you moving in this time. Help us to experience your presence. And help us to express who you are to the people who are around us. Don't let this be a time where we're just stuck inside, but let this be a time where we're in prayer, a time when we're, when we're talking to people, maybe from a distance, but we're still talking to them about the glory of God, about His Son and what He's done. Because God has not stopped. He is not silent. He is on the move today. And he's not quarantined. No, God is not quarantined. The Holy Spirit is out there. So let's move with him. Amen? Amen. Yeah, 
let's move today. Yes, on the move today. Here we go. Cause God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move. Many mighty ways. Yeah. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move, on the move today. Come on. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move, on the mighty ways. Yes, Lord. God is on the move, on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move, on the move today. On the moon. God is on the moon. <laughs> I am in worship. I'm exalting my king. It doesn't matter where you are. You just speak forth the wonders of God. Worship him wherever you are and let other people know about him. Amen. Amen. Bless you. As for you, the one who lives in the shelter of the Most High and resides in the protective shadow of the Sovereign One, I say this about the Lord, my shelter and my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. For you have taken refuge in the Lord, my shelter, the Most High. No harm will overtake you. No illness will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you in all you do. They will lift you up in their hands so you will not slip and fall on a stone. You will subdue a lion and a snake. You will trample underfoot a young lion and a serpent. The Lord says, because he is devoted to me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he is loyal to me. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him when he is in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him honor. I will satisfy him with long life and I will let him see my salvation. Psalm 91. Let's take some time to lift up in prayer because prayer is powerful. Prayer is the positive force that moves in this world, moves against the plans and the strategies of our enemies. So we're going to start by praying for the members of destiny. Lord, we thank you that you are our strong tower. You are our place of shelter in this time of trouble. We thank you, Father God, that this is not a surprise to you, but we can know that you have ordered our days. You knew this would happen. You have in our hands what we need to meet the challenges of this day, to meet the challenges and not just survive, but to be victorious. And I thank you, Lord God, that you cover every member of your body, your church, Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that this would be demonstrated in the members of Destiny Church as well. And Lord God, as we are a prayer army, together we lift up those who are on the front lines right now, those who are working in health care, 
who are meeting the needs of those who have just the regular everyday things that happen to us and those that are also being attacked by this new novel coronavirus. We thank you, Father God, that you will guard their health, that you will stand guard over their lives, that you would guard their backsides as far as their families and their homes, that their resources would be kept secure. And that, Father God, when they rest at night, it would be a rest that brings strength and health and wholeness. And we thank you, Father God, for those who are in the stores, who are doing the the regular tasks that allow us to have our food, to depend on our garbage being removed, and all those everyday things that we took so for granted before. Lord God, we pray that your presence would be with them as they work. Your peace would guard their hearts and minds, and that, Lord God, you would preserve their lives as well. And Father God, I pray that we would continue in our homes, in our days, as we walk the streets alone, we know that we are not alone because we walk with you and we can talk with you and we can lift these things and needs up to you and you hear us, Lord God. We specifically pray for Joe and Sally as they have returned and we thank you, Lord, that they've had a week at home in good health and in faith we declare they will be out of their home in the next week. We lift up their niece, Kim, who it, Pam, Pam, who is stranded in Morocco. We ask, Father God, that you would set angels about her, that wherever she is and however she moves in order to come home, that you would keep her in the palm of your hand and she would be in a crucible of safety. But Lord, too, we pray that this experience will open her eyes to your presence in her life and your call upon her. That, Lord God, it is not just her physical safety we're praying for, it is her eternal safety. And we thank you, Father God, that this is never, ever far from your eyes. Lord Jesus, we commit it all to you. And we thank you that your ears are open and your hand is ready and you are faithful and sure. And we have you, Lord Jesus, our rock to stand on in this time. We thank you, and we thank you again, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Announcements, yeah. Well, we've got... Yes. Okay, well, we don't have the basket here for you to look at, but think of it in your hearts. I've now been coached to have an a moment for us to reflect on the goodness of God and what we can do for him. And the rent is due. Uh, Pastor David and I would appreciate, Pastor Sandy, that uh, we have commitments that we have. And if you are faithful in your commitments to Destiny Church, we can do that. Destiny Church also has commitments to overseas. We have missions projects. We have pastors and students who depend upon us. And our latest news of the Philippines, which is where much of it goes, but also in Haiti, is that needs are very keen and very serious right now. And we want to be able to be faithful, demonstrate God's goodness and his faithfulness. So if you would please remember to bring your tithes and offerings in any number of ways, you can... Um, drop a check off in, or ma in the mail. You can uh, do the fancy thing in the bank where you do an e-transfer to info at destinychurch.ca. I believe you'd find that information on the website. Okay, but online giving through Tithely and PayPal continues to work just as well. All right. Yeah, right on the front page. You may, also phone the office. you may also phone the office, Sandy tells me, and we will make whatever arrangements are convenient for everyone. Right, good, I'm getting nods. Uh, are there any more announcements? Do you want me to continue? Okay. The project, yes. Sylvina is all alone in an empty apartment right now. 
and we want to give her a home, a place for her family to move into. So please continue to go through your things. It's a good time to do an inventory while we have so much time and uh, help Sylvina with the furniture and uh, home items that she needs to open her new apartment. And Sophie Sage is also just moved into town and she has a number of needs, so don't forget her. We are also collecting furnishings and household items for her. Okay, and yes, we also are appreciative of financial help as well. If you don't have things, there are expenses associated with moving, vans, packing, that kind of thing. Um, because we want to be able to move the furniture without breaking it or breaking our cars, right? David, you are coming up. There we go, Pastor David. Okay, just a couple quick announcements. Uh, I've sent out an email, I believe it was yesterday. Um, or no, it was uh, Wednesday. On Wednesday, we sent out an email, and it basically says that all church services uh, all church gatherings uh, or our Sunday gatherings are canceled until further notice. However, as you can tell, we are still streaming a Sunday service every time with worship and teaching. Um, also, all small groups uh, trainings, uh, all small groups schools of ministry uh, are canceled until we figure out what to do with them. Some of them will be online. Some of them will not be until the fall. Uh, we are going to start providing, as you've already probably seen, on if you follow us on YouTube or on our live stream that's starting uh, Friday, uh, March, whatever the date is, uh, uh, two days ago, I guess. Uh, um, we are going to send out a 10-minute video every day trying to encourage you and just give you some sanity and some clarity on this whole coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, you should have started to see them on Friday, March the, I don't know what it is, 20, 20th, I guess? Yeah, 20th. Okay, and um, we will start streaming online training as soon as possible, as soon as we get organized, okay? So that, I believe, is all of our announcements. Let me just think very quickly. Um, there will be probably another email in the next couple of days to give you links to make it a lot easier for you to follow our uh, daily videos and our teachings and things like that, okay? So that is the announcements, and now it is time for Mike Hardigan to come up and share with us today. Bless you, Mike. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So just please ignore the date there because the date is wrong. I was supposed to speak on the 15th, but I am actually speaking on the 22nd, Sunday the 22nd, because last week Pastor Dave spoke on fear, which is very important, especially in these days. Father, I just ask that you give me peace, that my words are your words, Father, that what you want to speak to your people is truth, and it encourages, and it's in love, and that everybody's heart is opened and receives it. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat> I came up with this uh, title uh, a little while ago, not realizing or not foreseeing what was going on in the world right now. And it's pretty interesting because, you know, the enemy does have a strategy to try and take us out. And he uses different methods. And I think last week when I talked about the truth of God, I gave a lot of passages in the Bible that encourages us from his word. So I wanted to uh, just uh, encourage everyone with these passages, and, and hopefully you'll get to read more of his word and be more encouraged by what he has for us, his promises, and what he says in the Bible about us so that we cast out a lot of the stuff that the enemy wants to use against us. So I'm going to give you some of these methods in order to recognize the strategy he has and to be able to conquer them with the Word of God. So let's look at six hindrances that are obstacles to our growth. The enemy <coughs> uses these to derail us from God's promises and the truth in his word. Six hindrances, 
So let's see. Is this going to work? Discouragement. Discouragement in life in general. Weakness. Our physical strength, our character, our whole soul, our whole being. Hopelessness. There's a lot of that going around today. People are running around scared and they feel hopeless. Giving up. I hear that all the time. We want to just give up, quit. Just at the finish line, almost there, and we just quit. Fear. We talked about that last week. That's a big one. Lack. A lack of. Lack of whatever is in your situation. Lack of finances. Lack of confidence. A lack of love. These are just a few I'm sure you can think of others yourself. So let's look at the first one, discouragement. In Deuteronomy 28, 13, if you listen to these commands of the Lord, your God, that I am giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. I think I talked about that two weeks ago. The being the head and not the tail will always be on top and never at the bottom. It's interesting that we will always be on top. You see, <clears throat> this could be many different things for us. In some, it means that you're struggling to find a job, so you're discouraged. Or your finances aren't going too well, so you're discouraged. Or maybe we're trying to reach out to family members and they want nothing to do with you, so you're discouraged. Perhaps we're struggling with loneliness, so we're discouraged because we're always alone. <clears throat> you see, this happened in my life with my brothers and sisters. They didn't accept me as part of the family at one point in my life when I found Jesus, because I was a little different, obviously, and they didn't feel like changing, and so they... They had a lot of trouble in struggling with forgiveness. And I know that that's a key issue to uh, being healed. If you're struggling with forgiveness, if you don't forgive, you're not forgiven. And so, you see, it was difficult for them. They were always operating in uh, bitterness, and they were always angry. And so I had a lot of trouble sharing my new life with them. And so, you know... That could make me feel a little discouraged if, if I didn't know Jesus. You see, it's not easy being a Christian in a family that you're the only one that's Christian. B.C., I wouldn't have had a problem with it. But after Christ, knowing Christ, it makes a difference. See, I dealt with all those things about forgiveness because I understood what God was saying in the Bible about forgiveness, that if I don't forgive, <laughs> he won't forgive me. So that's very important to me. So I went through all emotions to forgive, even if I didn't feel that, you know, at the time it wasn't warranted, or maybe I didn't mean it in my heart. I was just doing emotions. I, I forgive them, I forgive them. But after a little while, you know, when you really mean you forgive them, there's this burden that lifts off your shoulders. There's this ugly, discouraging burden that comes right off your shoulders, and you automatically feel Christ's joy in your heart, no matter what situation you are in your life with your family. I went through a lot of things with my family, but you see... God's truth cleansed me with the forgiveness. And now the responsibility is on them. It's not my responsibility. I forgave them for what they've done. So I don't have any discouragement in my life. You see, we need to understand the word of God. And he says that we are redeemed by grace through the forgiveness of our sins. He will forgive all our sins and we will have freedom when we forgive others. 
There's a catch. You see, if we forgive others and their offenses, then we're forgiven. So his words changed my thought patterns, and I became more and more encouraged in all situations in my life. When my career at work, or when I was dealing with family, when I felt down or discouraged by anybody, about, about any re reaction that they had, it wouldn't enter my spirit because I understood. And you know, if I thought it should go this way, but it didn't, I didn't get discouraged. If I wanted them to say something because I asked, but they didn't say what I wanted, I didn't get discouraged because of God's word. So you see, we don't rely on others to encourage us. Although it's nice to receive words of encouragement from brothers and sisters, I don't hold my breath waiting for them to encourage me. You see, the word of God says it all. In Romans 8, 37, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. See, because he loved us so unconditionally. In Joshua 1, 9, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? <laughs> do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That was big for me. Because, you know, I didn't think I had it all together. You know, and uh, I look around and there he is. No matter what I did, no matter where I am, he's there. Because he said it, wherever you go, he'll be there. So that encourages me. If I'm ever in a situation where I need his help or I need his encouragement, I'm not waiting for others to encourage me. It's him that encourages me. I have a bonus one here. Romans 15, 5. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Jesus Christ had. May the God who gives you endurance and encouragement. He knew we needed endurance because it's a tough ride. But we need to be encouraged because he gave us the same mindset as Christ had. And what was that mindset? What was the attitude Christ had? It was a, a mindset of compassion and love. He loved everyone equally. So I think that's what we should be walking around with, his compassion and love in our minds so that we are encouraged and we can endure. So the second one. Oh, I had that one up there. Sorry. The next one is weakness. <laughs> See, the enemy wants us to think that we're weak and unable to overcome any adversities in our lives, that we can't accomplish anything because we're feeble beings and have no power. Well, some of us might think that that's a hindrance being weak, but we're not talking about brute strength, right? Maybe, but in the words according to 2 Corinthians, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient. I could stop right there. My grace is sufficient. That means it's everything. We don't need anything else. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. So we should run around and say, I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak. Because in, with Christ in us, we have all the power we need. When we walk in weakness, we are all allowing Christ's power to rest on us. And with all the compassion and love that he has for people, we'll have. So I wonder what it would look like in the world today 
If everybody in the world just walked around right now in the humility and the love that Christ had. Think about it. I don't know if that'll happen. But it's my prayer. So we shouldn't rely on weakness because he is strong. And if he is in us, we are strong. That's also in 2 Corinthians. We don't have a king that hasn't gone through anything and hasn't experienced it because Jesus went through it as we're going through it. In Hebrews 4.15 For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. So we have an example to follow. It's not as if God is saying, do I say, uh, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> Jesus went through the wilderness and was tempted in his weakness. Imagine 40 days in the desert, no food. I don't know if I can go three days without food. <laughs> no, I can't go three days without food. <laughs> Let's get serious. 40 days. How would you look, how would you feel, like really, you know? If someone came up to you, here, you want a burger? Come on, have a french fry. That would be gone. <laughs> but he took the Father's words and proclaimed the truth and claimed a victory over the evil one. You remember the story. He wasn't tempted at all. He declared victory for God with his word. So we have a partner that will fight with us when we're weak. We just have to humble ourselves, position our hearts in the right place, and receive the truth, and we'll have his power. Then we can walk in the desert for 40 days. Sometimes my life went through 40 days of desert, here and there. You see, it's just like Moses had a lot of power when he realized who was working through him. He knew he couldn't do it on his own. In Exodus 4.13, hope I have that one. No, I don't. We'll just ignore that right now. But Moses said, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else because of his weakness. See, Moses almost missed his opportunity to be used by God because he thought He thought of his weakness. How many times have we missed our opportunities because of our weaknesses? See, God can make our weaknesses and make us mighty kings in all situations. Oh, so we're on to the next one. Right. Hopelessness. Number three. Hopelessness. Hmm, what's, what's the opposite of hopelessness? Hope. <laughs> and we can find hope throughout the word and where it comes from. Psalm 62.5, it says, Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from him. It seems like there's many situations where we can feel hopeless. Why does this happen to me? What else can go wrong? I can't remember a time in my life when my wife and I were, uh, the kids were young and we were struggling financially and so we were just getting our nose out of the water and <clears throat> and all of a sudden, bang, something hits us. We just get financial blessing and then something hits us and takes it all away. And so, you know, I had nothing left to do except get on my knees and cry and go, why, God, why is this always happening? Why? And, you know, why are we always struggling like this? It was dangerous to do that because God, he told me. You know, the reality was that I was looking at it wrong because he's always working when we don't see him, right? 
like the song. So he knew I was going to have this struggle in front of me all of a sudden. So he was already preparing finances to come. You see, I was looking at it from a hopeless point of view. We're trying to get ahead, and all of a sudden we get some finances. Yes, we can do so. And the car breaks down. And this check, $785. The car costs $740. Wow. So, boy, I had to change my whole thought process around from, oh, this is hopeless, I'll never get ahead, to, thank you, God, you made a way. It was amazing. <laughs> because his promise is for us to prosper, right? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah. Love Jeremiah 29, 11. Say that a lot. Because it's true. We declare it all the time. Because it's true. So we have hope. See, God gives us hope through his plan of prosperity. And he'll protect us. So we don't have to worry about the future. Thinking about tomorrow, <laughs> it just makes you miss what he's got for you today. We're always thinking about tomorrow. Oh, that's coming tomorrow. That's coming tomorrow. And then, you know, we, we start to get blinded of what God is actually putting right in front of you each day. So I have hope. First Thessalonians 1, 3. We remember before our God, our Father, your work produced by faith, your labor prompt by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in your Lord Jesus Christ. So if we have faith and we know Jesus, he gives us the power to endure, and we put our hope in Jesus, he takes all the hopelessness and despair away. He's our champion. We as brothers and sisters should always be encouraging one another. We should be as aspiring each other to greater things. We should be speaking life into each other. This is where prosperity begins. We should always have hope. We just have to look at it from a different perspective. The truth of God gives us a lot of hope. I'm going to go to the next one. Number four. I hope so. <laughs> I have hope. <laughs> Giving up. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Giving up. It's so easy to do. It's so hard. Oh, it's so hopeless. Oh, I can't do it. This is too, I'm tired. You know, this weapon the evil one uses so often, and you don't, we don't even realize it till it's too late. And he combines a lot of this, like giving up with hopelessness or giving up with weakness. So he combines tools in order to be even stronger. So it's harder for us. It's harder for us to defeat it unless we use the truth. You see, he works overtime, especially when we're working for the kingdom. When we're doing something to advance the kingdom, we can, be, we can get feelings of being overwhelmed. So we get tired, burnt out, and we feel like giving up. So if we can recognize that we can control these feelings, and who's making us feel this way, then we can feel better about all we do if we have the right motives in our hearts. You see, the devil would like nothing more than to make us feel powerless and too tired to do anything. No one cares. You're just getting tired. No fruit will come of it. No one loves you. Who cares? It doesn't matter if you finish this or not. See, what it would have transpired if these people gave up. Noah. Oh, sons, 
I'm too tired. I'm going to go to bed. I'm not finishing this boat. You're crazy. That's got another 158 feet to do. You're crazy? Forget it. I'm going to bed. No boat. What about Moses? If he didn't pursue the promised land, the people would be perished in the desert forever. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Back it up. I, did I say that one? That's right. It's there. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. So we're not only going to get strength, he increases our power. So if we feel weak, put on Jesus and we get power. You just get, you know, put on Jesus. Just keep putting on Jesus. He's our strength. He's our tower. He's our pillars that hold us up. He's our rock that we've made our foundation on. So he gives us the strength. Here's a big one. What if Jesus is carrying the cross? <sighs> Forget it. <laughs> and he walks away. What if Jesus gave up? Where would we be right now? I know where I would be. Where would you be? See, he had a chance to give up. He was in the garden, and he asked his father if there was any other way. Take it from me. <laughs> but him being connected with the father, he knew what the whole plan was. And he says, let your will be done, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's hard to understand that we have that determination in us because we accept Jesus. It's hard to understand that power he had at that moment to accept what was coming is the power that we could have in our hearts, in our spirits. When we accept it, then we don't have any other of those weaknesses or hopelessnesses. Fear. Pastor Dave did one heck of a talk last week on fear. It was amazing. I'm just going to touch on it. Because it's a major method the enemy uses to paralyze us, to keep us from our destiny. We take on the fear of man, fear of failure, Fear of not being accepted. What's going on today? Fear of lack, fear of depression, fear of loneliness. I can go on and on and on because fear just attaches everything in our lives. It can attack us in every area of our lives. So we retreat instead of move forward. We hide instead of coming out. Fear of man, we don't want to give our opinions on any subject because we're afraid they might not like what we say. Or we're not going to go to that party they invited me, but, I'm, you know, the crowd might not like me. Or I'm not going to take that promotion at work because, you know, I don't think I've got the goods to deliver. So uh, maybe I'll just stay in the background. And so you allow fear to control us. And we'll walk around like we have cement shoes on. Not able to do anything. And will sink and not survive. Here's a saying we should be saying. I'm not going to survive. I'm going to thrive. Because I have the power of Jesus. Whoops. I was already there. The spirit you receive does not make you a slave. So that you live in fear. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. Adoption to son What does that mean? Adoption to sonship. Wow, the family of God. We are part of the Almighty God's family. The all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing Father. Abba, Father. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. 
We can declare this every day. I will not be run around and shown that I'm fearful. I've got the power. Who? I got the power. I know. <laughs> First John 4:18 there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. No one who fears is not made uh, sorry, the one who fears is not made of perfect in love. That's a famous verse. Simple steps to take. Not to have fear. Operate in love as God loves. Loving keeps the plan of Satan at bay. He has no effect on us. He can't penetrate the spirit of love. Isn't that amazing? Satan cannot penetrate my spirit. Because I have God's love in me. I'm walking around with Jesus' power. He tries. I get a little bit, uh -huh. But then I'm back up because I'm encouraged by the word God promises me. He abides in me. You see, actually, Satan is in fear. He finds out that we understand who we are and who abides in us. He's shaking in his boots. He definitely is. And when we start reading the Word of God, he's like, oh no, they're going to get the truth. Oh my God, they're going to understand. And then he has no power on us. Because now we know. I would rather read God's Word, the truth, and start understanding it, and start walking it out, and knowing the promise he has for me, than to let the devil try and take me out. Number six, lack. Lack of finances, love, faith, friendship, etc., etc., etc. Lack of whatever. I thought I was in lack many years ago. Whoops, no, oh, sorry. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. So you see, we. Jesus walked into his own town and they had a lack. And what did they miss? They missed the move of God. They missed the opportunity to know that God was walking among them. They missed the opportunity of salvation. They missed the opportunity to learn all the good things that he, learned, he taught us while he was on the earth about loving one another with compassion there was so much that city lacked just from that one decision. Lack of faith. If the evil one can put doubt in our faith, then he has put a, a, a crowbar in to lift, and he is there if he has put doubt in our faith. He can move God out of our lives. It'd be hard to believe that Jesus moves in power if we don't have faith. To me, the answer to lack is Jesus. Actually, the answer to every question is Jesus. <laughs> but, but if you have lack, put Jesus in your heart and then you won't feel that lack anymore. Luke 18, 22. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. It tells me that if I run after treasures on earth, I'll still feel lack. I'll still feel empty about 40 years ago or 35 years ago, that was me running after I don't know what, thinking I can fulfill the emptiness and the lack in my heart with different things. And it didn't work. I was still empty. I still lacked because I didn't have Jesus. I didn't have the power that comes with it. You don't feel satisfied 
You're never full. You're always feeling empty. So what he's saying is that you give it all away and you'll get the treasures of heaven. What's the treasure of heaven? Because then he says, come and follow me. Which means he's following his treasure. <laughs> Jesus is the treasure. Knowing these traps and how to counter them will give us less of a struggle to achieve the gold, knowing that we have Jesus on our side. God didn't put us on the earth to be bumps on the log. We were given dominion over the earth to prosper and to have a great future and tell everyone about the love of God that's for them, Jesus. So we have a counterattack. How do we battle discouragement? With encouraging words we find in God's truth. Read the promises God has for us. How do we get rid of weakness? Well, with the Holy Spirit strength that Jesus said that he would send to us. Oh, he's going to send us a friend. And he did. <clears throat> How do we overcome hopelessness? By letting Jesus into our hearts, the hope of glory. How do we stop giving up? <laughs> by being encouraged through perseverance, by seeing others not giving up. And we encourage one another, cheering each other on. And how do we battle fear? With perfect love. Love that casts out fear. And last but not least, how do we overcome lack? By understanding that he is sufficient for all situations in our lives. God supplies all of our needs. So that's my message for today. Back up. So this is the counterattack. Today, I think the evil one's strategy is really working overtime, especially <laughs> in this situation with the coronavirus. There's, uh, I believe, even Christians are fighting Christians, not knowing what to do. Um, in my own mind, to be honest, in my own mind, I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted by knowing the truth, standing on his word and the power, knowing that he is protecting me, Psalms 91. And at the same time, I want to do what's right, because Jesus also told us to follow the rules and the laws of the land, right? And so if the government is telling us to stay isolated or stay away or, well, because it's, it's for the safety of the elderly. So now I'm like, hmm, okay. I want to walk around and just be free because I know Christ is in me and I know that I'm going to be safe. But if, if I walk around with the virus and I don't know it, then I can possibly give it to someone and, and, and if they're older and they have a weak immune system, Complications could happen. So I'm praying a lot. I, I hope you are. And I'm not allowing the evil one to use his strategy against me. I'm going to continue reading God's word. I'm going to continue learning. I'm going to continue praying for everyone. And I'm continuing to pray that God comes and cleans this place up with his healing. Because he said he does. Our stripes. By his stripes we are healed. And so, Father, I just pray right now that you come, Holy Spirit, come and cleanse this earth 
with the blood of your son Jesus. That this virus has no right being here. And we declare your goodness, Father. We declare your healing power on this earth right now in everybody that has contacted this virus. Father, we ask for your healing. In Christ's name, thank you.